a response video to three videos. One by Thou Art That, Matt. One by Conference Report. And then finally one by The Modern Mystic. And I'll take them in bites. I'll just play a minute and a half of the video to myself. And then I will respond to what is being said. We'll try that as a new format. Um, I will say that, uh, yeah, the videos get progressively better. This one is being the most... I don't know what the hell he's saying. Um, and then all the way to the modern mystic who gets quite lucid uh, you know, and clear at the end. Um, so anyway, it is a progressive scale of rationality, sanity, and um, logic. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, so to begin, uh, I'm going to hit the button. There we go, hitting the button. Life, like um, it's microscopic. Uh, calcite, um, catholicophores, um, really. <laughs> Whoops, didn't mean to turn it off there. Um, anyway, yeah, so um, first minute and a half, and he's basically, all right, it's m matter, life. Now, these are words you got to be able to figure out. But then he goes soul, spirit. Okay, so, you know, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, it's just this, pl the planet is now alive because it has pieces on it. And the pieces automatically mean something else. Just like we're made out of pieces and we become human beings. Somehow, planets are now got pieces on them, so they're automatically got a brain and a liver and a kidney, and um, they're thinking and accomplishing, and they're going, you can see the, the planet's legs, I mean, you can see the planet's um, engine, you know, it's thermal, um, you know, uh, volcano engine, oh, that's right, it doesn't have one of those, oh, that's right, it doesn't have any evidence whatsoever that it's a feeling thinking being. Yeah, it doesn't play by any of the same rules. Um, whatever, this is just silly words, though. Soul, spirit, you can't do anything with this this mumbo-jumbo. Come on. Which allows it to respond in a more complex way to to its environment. And then somehow within that, within soul, and even further um, advance can be made. Not, not necessarily that it's better than or anything. It's just a uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so basically, soul is imagination. Um, because we can come up with some kind of silly notions of grandeur, like we're accomplishing something, like we're doing something, um, you know, play the little ego games out or whatnot, that that's validation enough. You don't need to be right, you don't need to be accurate, all you need is a good cartoon. Uh, to project onto the world and you become part of the cartoon, you know, so you got like Funny Hamburger, you got um, uh, Pencil Man, and you got um, Giant Booger called TJ. And uh, you just put yourself into the cartoon, just say, I'm going to be um, whatever, fuzzy. I'm going to be fuzzy thing under the bed. And I'm going to just pop into the, the, little, the little cartoon and we'll just make it all make sense because we'll make it all the frig up. Yeah, sorry, no sale. I mean, we'll call it soul. We'll call that having a soul and a spirit. That means having a completely deluded, phantasmagorical, silly, made-up cotton candy, um, you know, gumdrops and gingerbread bullshit perception of reality. Fantastic. <laughs> and that activity, you know, really the chemistry, uh, my basic level is what provides the condition for the possibility of our soul life and our spiritual life. And then, of course, the condition for the possibility of the living body is, is the material earth. All right, so, yeah, um, basically, yeah, okay, we got these human beings. They evolve on planet Earth. They've been around for 10,000 years in a 15-billion-year-old universe, right? 10,000 years, 15 billion years. Um, and somehow that's the universe doing something. Now that we're uh, become this really animated, funky, let's all sing a song. And uh, yeah, so let's, because we can do that. We can all just sing some idiotic Oklahoma song or something, right? Oklahoma with the thing, fluffy, dewy, dewy, bob, la, la, la. Then somehow the universe is now singing. The universe has now made itself and found itself because we have invented a porcelain toilet and put our poopy in it. I mean, come on. This is seriously stupid. 
Um, we are we are <laughs> we're a kind of maggot that grew on planet Earth. All right. I mean, you could you can make up little stories in your head. You could watch a Star Trek episode. There's a little rock guy, and he eats all the rocks, and he he he, he, he is, is guarding of the eggs, and they have a, he has a million little silicone eggs he's gardening of because that's going to be the next generation of little rock eaters. I mean, what? So now the universe has found itself now. Now it has a brand new dress. The universe has a brand new dress and ruby slippers because there's a rock monster on planet Goofbong, uh, you know, that's eating rocks. God, this is just such fail. No spirit, so I think they part, you know, as accused of dropping the ball on the whole issue of you know, animals and feeling keen. I think you shouldn't have said that they didn't have souls. Clearly they do, but the spirit, um, self-consciousness, that seems to be a human capacity. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, so animals have souls, but they don't have spirits. So, what? <laughs> well, I'm not even, I can't even, there's no point in doing anything with this. Is there? Is there some point in me trying to understand this mumbo-jumbo? No, there really isn't a point. Um, you know, the fact that we can be self-reflexive is a byproduct of the fact that we know pi. We, we know relationships that no other animal knows. Of course we do. That's right. We know relationships they can't possibly know. Um, you know, the relationship between the, the diameter and the hypotenuse and the <laughs> circumference and the whatever. Yeah, we know all that stuff. All right, big deal. I mean, yeah, that certainly gives us this inwardly, outwardly perspective. But it doesn't change the fact that if somebody kicks you in the nuts, it's going to fucking hurt. Damn it. We consider more than a single generation into the future. Humans can almost consider you know, eternity. What is the good you know, in, in itself? We contemplate ethics on that level of abstraction. Which is really, it's, a, it's our consciousness of, of our own death. And our uh, to... Whatever. Yeah, again, you know, this is just all such big talk. Humans can do this, humans can do that with this great little pile of information we have. And we don't do any of that crap anyway. This whole idea that some human is sitting here contemplating three generations down the road or ten generations down the road. They're not doing any of that, people. There's people right now having kids. They have, like, claw hand disease. And there's a one in three chance their kid is going to have claw hand disease. And they're going to fucking have the kid anyway. That's how thoughtful they are. All right, and that's how thoughtful they are of the down, downside implications into the future about their kids carrying those same genes into the future. I mean, there's no fucking thought or any of this crap. There's a bunch of little horny, selfish, asshole human beings who are acting like fucking maggots. And the only difference between the fucking human maggots and the regular maggots is that human beings have nuclear fucking maggot bombs. Okay, that's the only difference, Matt. We're still selfish, motherfucking pieces of shit. All our goddamn intelligence hasn't, hasn't gotten humans. They're using their intelligence as scheming weapons. Okay, in the struggle to survive, to plow the stupid DNA field that doesn't need to be plowed, where nothing's going to be planted. It's just a pointless chase carrots, run from sticks, bullshit game. Um, and all this little glorification that humans or beings are doing something spiritual or soulful or, or, or beautiful or magnificent with their fucking presence here is just a big pile of crap. Sorry, fail. It's just an interesting story to tell about the way ideas relate to one another and to whatever that thing is that we call reality. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, obviously we're not calling it reality. Uh, we're, we're not agreeing on what is real, that's for sure. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's just... <clears throat> Yeah, enough, enough of this already. I mean, this idea that somehow now life is a, uh, a con you know, can't use the word life. That's too complicated, but we can use words like soul and spirit. I mean, that's just kind of silly, um, in my opinion. Silly, sorry. No, silly. Too silly. All right, so we'll move on to conference report. All right, conference report video. Yeah, he's changed the title a little and put, put misery out of its life. So essentially saying, let's just kill the misery and then somehow everything will be okay. 
And, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, in theory, sure, that sounds great. Let's get rid of all the plagues and the blights and the work and the effort and the all the all the little bad parts. Let's pull all the weeds out of the garden and we'll have our perfect, beautiful garden. It's still nothing. It's still pointless. But, yes, it'd be very good to do that. Uh, what's the uh, what's the chances of that happening? Oh, yeah, that's right, zero. Um, so what's the point of that? Um, he also said in here, like, somehow I'm I'm not the one glued to this stupid life word. I, I put, put life in capital letters out of its misery. Um, just pointing out that it's like a, 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 a you know, life is a, a, a collective in the end. And, um, you know, that's where this, this whole game starts, is with this concept of a reproducing DNA molecule. All right, that's what the, the, the thing is made out of. That's the core of it. Um, and so, yeah, where you would put the victims of the living mechanism out of their misery. You would humanely put a dog to sleep. Life needs to be humanely put to sleep. Um, it, it needs to be put out of its jeopardy of, of, you know, living just through bleak, awful horror. Um, so anyway, I don't really care for this new angle, but we'll see where it goes. So, yeah, um, see you in a little bit with that weren't obviously alive were the rocks and the water, really. And it hasn't changed that much since the, the introduction of the Bronze Age. I mean, pretty much the only significant things that we interact with now that aren't either currently alive or have been alive in the past are metals, really, and some salts. That's about it, really, isn't it? Right? Um, yeah, okay, so he doesn't, he doesn't like this word life. Okay, fine. Um, you know, because there's this transition point, and I've made that point in my video at least twice in the in the, in this even in just this set of videos. I've even said the words that we're not technically even alive. You can't really call us a life form. We are. We do not carry. Uh, we're a colony. Um, you know, our our brain function, all these organs, they're not organs of a living cell. Um, they're they're what happens when you put a billions billions. Hundreds of billions of cells together, maybe a couple of trillion cells together. This is what you end up with. Um, so yeah, that's very distinct from a protozoa, you know, just just uh, moving its way through um, the real environment. All right, wait a minute. To his point that this 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 we're all connected to this life thing that's everywhere thing. Well, that's you know, this is again this poetry stuff in a sense. This is a. a a, a selective metaphor. I could also describe human beings who have lived hundreds of years, thousands of years, in environments that were void of life, except for what they ate. Um, there's human beings living in the Arctic, and they're just eating eating reindeer. The only other living thing they ever come in contact with is a little tiny bit of, of green they once in a while see, and uh, uh, the animals they eat. The fur, the, the, the hides of them, the rest of it. The rest of the, the fucking universe to them is dead. Um, I could make the same argument that the, in the, the desert people, <laughs> you know, of the um, Middle East, um, don't, don't live with life right on their fingertips all the time. They live with a ton of dead, uh, bleak, um, desolate, thousands of miles of desolate. So I think this is just silly poetry. And such. Or a cliff, you know, the cliffs, certainly here in the UK, many of the cliffs are chalk, and of course chalk is um, shells of uh, tiny little uh, sea-dwelling, uh, whatever they are, crustaceans. So, you know, we, we are surrounded by not just the living, but the dead, uh, and the ones alive. Yeah, well, whatever. I mean, even to call it the ones alive, who cares? Yeah, there, there's, there's what, what there is is this screaming evidence of billions of years. It's kind of a spooky word. Billion years. I mean, billion. <laughs> One thousand million years um, of, of, of this eking out of an existence, of this, this drama of, of consume and be consumed um, being played out. I mean, this, this horrible, long Broadway play that is the biggest piece of crap ever written. And it goes on and on and on, and it plays on forever, and the echo is still echoing, and the, the, the stench of it is, is still plaguing the, the, the environment. It's, 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 it's still blighted with the sound of this horrible, awful um, horror of Tyrannosaurus chomping on entrails. I mean, come on. 
I mean, what most life is doing, okay, I, I concede your point. But we've already argued that. We're not really talking when we're, when we're using, when we're having this conversation about putting it out of its misery. Obviously, we're not talking about the part that isn't miserable, the part that can't feel. But we understand that that's how life works, okay? The part that can't feel has been essentially the egg of the part that becomes feeling, so, I mean, if, if there's no real point in squashing out all, all of the, let's say if AIDS was a, was a, a you know, had, had eggs, you wouldn't just kill the AIDS virus and leave the eggs behind, right? You'd, you'd be smarter to say, well, kill the fucking eggs, too. <laughs> you know, come on. It's all as a thing. Um, it's not just a driving force that is, a, that is something that you can consciously assign or that you can get into an interpersonal relationship with other people and... and and assign this thing about purpose. Yeah, I mean, that's really important. You know, we, um, of course, per the whole, I think the whole idea of purpose, just like the idea of value, and I think those are intertwined concepts. The whole idea of purpose is, um, of course, it's it originates in desire. You know, when you talk in one of your videos about, you know, the donkey plowing the field. The donkey doesn't plow the field because it wants to plow the field. The donkey plows the field because it wants to avoid the stick and get the carrot. Those are the desires, but we can plow the field because we want to plow the field because we are capable of. of um... <laughs> yeah, right. Because we're capable of making up a pile of bullshit to justify it, and that's all. I mean, there is no, you know, to sit there and argue that somehow the donkey, you know, wants to plant a field of tulips. Um, you know, or the, oh, no, let's have another bad Broadway play. Let's plow the field and build a, a playhouse, and then we'll uh, present Oklahoma in it for 10 zillion years until every piece of matter on Earth, I mean, in the universe, has exploded out of sheer, sheer horror. Um, I mean, this is just such a bullshit. What human beings are planning a future that has anything to do with something that they don't get graft out of, that they aren't fucking taking their profit out of it? Um... So bullshit on this idea that somehow we can do it on purpose. No, we're chasing carrots. Sometimes the carrots look a little different, okay? They're a little funky shaped. Um, and, and we try to make them sound like the carrot isn't really just a selfish carrot, that somehow the carrot that we're chasing is, oh, some sort of spirit or soul, or we're going to make a pyramid, or we're going to make some other kind of crap. And so you can pretend that you're actually doing something on purpose, that you're actually plowing a field on purpose, but you're not. You're just chasing a selfish carrot. I mean, this is just bullshit. <laughs> you know, bullshit. Sorry, bullshit. I call it bullshit. Somebody else does. Um, I mean, that's, that's just, again, a significant distinction in, in this DNA world. You know, animals are incapable of doing that. Uh, we seem to, as, as far as I know, and I may be wrong here, we seem to be the only ones that can make intergenerational plans. You know, we can pl plan things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we're not doing any of that crap. So we're just back to more of this mat kind of crap. That somehow the fact that we merely can, it's possible for us to be great, <laughs> you know, in terms of having some sort of um, logical plan that's purely logical. The fact that we can have theoretically can be logical means that somehow we're justifiable. No, because we're not. We're not logical. We're 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 always doing the morph the carrot, morph the carrot, and put it in front of the world and turn it into something you can want. And that's how it works. Unfortunately, sadly, pitifully, the only reason why you do something that is logical or pure is because you create some sort of humiliation program starts running. Um, that's going to check your own personal gain. You're always looking for the graft in it for yourself, and you can finally do some way, find some way to, to, to clean the equation. Um, but the bottom line is, look, this, this video series was, was provoked as being the end game. That was the original title. Maybe I should have stayed with that title. The point isn't, is there some way we can do human life better? Is there some way human beings can, can, can get more efficiency and function uh, or be less dysfunctional. Can we be less dysfunctional? Yes. Can we be less illogical? Yes. Um, can we waste less suffering? Yes. Um, the point is, though, is there any point in, in the end? Isn't, isn't the ultimate answer just to say, quit plowing the DNA's field? Quit being a slave to a DNA molecule? Isn't that the end question? Is, isn't that the... The way to clean the whole thing up is just to quit chasing carrots and quit obeying the whip. Shit. Life without purpose is. 
and I'm talking purpose in almost kind of spiritual terms, which is how people tend to use it. Um, I don't think we should fetishize the idea of purpose, but recognize that it's uh, that it's functioning differently within humans, for good and ill, than it is in uh, desire-driven donkeys. Anyway, thanks very much for that. Let's continue. Morning, yeah, well, it's not, though. It's not. We're, we're not uh, functioning on any higher level than donkeys, okay? And the fact that we are just squandering the technology. We, what do we do with the technology? We create nuclear bombs. We, we create drone airplanes. We create other insidious ways to annihilate each other. And the only way we ever fix anything, the only time we ever heal anything anymore, is because there's some fucking money to be fucking goddamn made. Uh, that's all people want to hear. They're not going to cure your circumstance unless they can make a fucking profit off of it. All right? so, so don't talk to me about uh, we've got to separate the wheat from the, sh the chaff or we've got to separate the good from the bad. No, it's all bullshit, Fred. It's all fucking bullshit, okay? And you said, uh, well, well, you wouldn't el eliminate all matter or, or destroy the whole universe. Why the fuck not? What can the universe possibly accomplish? Can, is the universe, is there any rational, logical, purely sensible um, accomplishment that the universe could, could, could do? I, I've made the argument before, I mean, but if you're really going to look at intelligence, what is, what is intelligence? What can it do? Oh, that's right, it's a problem solver. So before intelligence can do a motherfucking thing, you've got to create a problem for it to solve. You've got to put something that needs in jeopardy. You have to create the victim before intelligence can come to the rescue. There's no Superman without something put at jeopardy. And so you're just saying, no, we've got to keep Superman, but Superman is cool. Well, you can't keep Superman. You can't keep the value of intelligence. You can't keep the meaning of anything, really, um, until you keep the fucking horror. You've got to keep the fucking victim. So fuck that shit. It can't work. It's bullshit. It's crap. And this, this mumbo-jumbo that somehow we're going to make it all better, that somehow human beings have some capacity to fix this plow DNA field game that we're playing and somehow make it turn and somehow they're going to, they're going to bend the carrots enough and, and wander down the field and not get whipped by the DNA who's going to say, well, the only way you're going to be able to survive the future is you're going to have to limit everybody's freedom because you can't have freedom and technology. Those two things are incompatible. I can give you five million scenarios that there is no fucking future until you fix. There will be no possibility of surviving technology without changing human psychology. That's a fucking fact. It's not a fable. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a fucking goddamn Oklahoma play. No, it's a fucking fact like pi. Like, um... Um, e equals MC squared. You cannot survive fucking technology with a bunch of psychotic, hate-filled asshole bigots in the fucking goddamn world. Can't fucking do it. Is anybody fixing that problem? Has anybody got a fucking plan? No, they just keep popping out motherfucking kids saying, I'm capable, I'm God, I know what's best. I will create the next generation that will fix the world. They will not suffer. My kids will not be born in jeopardy. I will not be putting them at risk. I mean, this is all fucking placating a bunch of overbreeding motherfucking cunts who are stupid. They have kids because they're stupid. Say those fucking words. They have kids because they're selfish motherfuckers, not because it logically makes goddamn sense to impose another generation. If there was a fucking planet where human beings sat around all day and sang Oklahoma all fucking day, are you telling me I should give a shit if that planet blew up? If a bunch of cowboys fucking bouncing around, oh, I'm a cowboy, I'm a cowboy, I'm a cowboy, I'm a cowboy, doing a fucking dance all fucking day. I should care if that fucking planet blows the fuck up. Why the fuck would I care? Why would I say the universe needs that shit? And why does the universe need this shit? Sorry, but you're really pissing me off. I mean, this is just bullshit. This was just placating, poetic, faggoty, sissy, uh, whatever. Oh, human beings have some potential to do something. Yeah, we're on, we're, we got some kind of potential. No, we got potential to fucking eat each other's asses, to cause all kinds of suffering and exploitation. We see what we have potential to do. We see what we create, the fucking Frankensteins, the Donald Trump Frankensteins, the fucking Osama Bin Laden, Obama fucking Frankensteins. Anyway, <laughs> didn't mean to do this. Anyway, all right. So, and as for the Modern Mystics video, yeah, he, you know, Mirandered a little bit, but it's a good video. 
and uh, just gets to the point that, come up with it. G give, give it to me. Come on, give it to me. Come on, give it to me. He's basically asking you, give me the scenario where this stupid play makes sense. Explain it to me. Beyond your addiction, beyond your desire, beyond what you need it to be, what is it accomplishing? Oh, that's right. Ouch, 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 ouch. Nothing. But I will say, yeah, Nick did have one line in his video that pissed me off. Uh, as he said, uh, nothing better to do. Sort of implying, <laughs> you know, that it really doesn't matter. That futility doesn't just mean there's nothing to be accomplished, but that there's no risk of failure. I would argue that where you're failing hugely, and so it's more than just futile, it is stupid. So it's not just futile. It's stupid. It's irresponsible. It's wasteful. It's... It's a definite red number. It's not a black number. It's not just it's not just zero. Okay, it's bad. So anyway, enough said.